themselves into the current meta, which both these teams said they didn't want to do. Uh, they just want to play to their own styles. Well, we'll see what happens here in Champ Select. Curious to see if there's any shake-offs, but Jay's going to start things off fairly standard for Team Liquid as they'll take that one off the board. They're on blue side, of course. TLG on the red. We'll see how they fare. Again, looking for things like Graves. I think Jin's been pretty instrumental in the series, so see if maybe he's got an early attention. Although LeBlanc for Canalogic Gaming is going to keep things as per usual. There's Shen once again for Team Liquid. Yeah, the Huhi Golden Glue matchup has also been very interesting. First time around with you know, Huhi trying to counter pick, cast it in into the Echo. Um, and then second time around, they completely switch it. They both go back towards the long range DPS control mages. And uh, see what's in store for number number three here. LeBlanc is still getting banned, by the way, even after the nerfs. Uh, she was one of the ones with you know, a little bit lighter uh, as far as the nerfs go. Pretty much everybody else as well. Actually, standard red side ban so far from CLG from last patch. That's true. I would like to see them definitely ban the Graves instead of um, the Camille or anything. Yeah, I mean, Camille's dropped through both games, and there's actually a ban for Team Liquid, so they'll do the favor there for Counter Logic Gaming. And okay. I imagine Graves will be the ban here. Graves, yeah. Uh, it's getting perfect much, if not. <laughs> I, I would definitely expect the Graves man, but then the first pick, does it become you prioritize your front line and go with Maokai uh, now that Shen is banned, or do you prioritize that backline Jin that you're talking about, which both of them also had success on, and both of them do feel more comfortable as far as lethality AD carries are right now. So no surprise so far, step one complete. Mm -hmm. So number two, will it be that Maokai front line or are they going to swap it over to AD carry priority? Because that was definitely a big issue. Not only first blood, but also through that mid game. I think it is Jin, but no, that's really different. Mm -hmm. Kha'Zix. So really it's different in that it's exactly the same. Where yeah. Rain over, yeah. <laughs> Rain over picks up the Kha'Zix when Graves is banned. Um, and he, we talked about a lot before where, you know, he was the one where people were pinching his jungle champion pool and uh, going with that rain guard trade over and over. But um, neither rain over or Smithy have been very good at playing rain guard recently. recently. Honestly, they have had uh, you know, lackluster rain guard gains from both of them. So much like the Varus in these two teams, uh, it does drop low in priority. And I'm actually a little bit surprised to see it keep getting banned because a lot of teams have been letting it through versus these guys and that's why you know yeah rain over and smithy have been getting games on rain Ooh. on rengar but with him on the man phase and with the grains <laughs> the kha'zix is picked up so. yeah and these are the obvious picks for clg on the other side Jin and maokai expected i expected uh, uh maokai kha'zix if mm -hmm. Team Liquid first pick Jim, but they take Kha'Zix instead. Varus is back for, uh, for Piglet here, so Team Liquid are going to stick to a bit more standard, and I do like the tank pick up there for Lolo. Pretty safe, and did have a good game on it also. Yeah, and even though Piglet's win rate with the Varus isn't that great, there was that one that sticks out in everyone's mind of the flashing forward Varus Ultimates uh, where he was creating plays. We'll see if he sticks with the rest of the team, though, because his positioning on the Varus has been uh, odd at times, especially around objectives. Uh, and sticking behind the Nautilus is definitely going to be paramount, especially since both teams seem to be running uh, fairly similar, super strong backline divers. Yep. I like the Lee Sin, though, again from Xmithy. Showed that he could play into this matchup, so I think maybe comfortable giving away Kha'Zix for that reason. And we'll see what CLG have in store for their ban. I imagine there's a Soraka ban on the way on the Liquid side. <laughs> maybe even an army as well. It's been pretty popular. There's Thresh, though, once again for CLG, so kind of funny to see support target bans, but it's actually been a pretty big feature of the series is their Soraka ban. And the thing that CLG are worried about with this Thresh is because Aphromoof wants to keep playing these sustained supports with either the Soraka or Nami, depending on what's banned, um, he's worried about the you know th Ignite Thresh coming in, you know hook landing in lane phase and kills coming out of that, or you know the Flay combos, a lot of uh, gank assistance as well. So removing a lot of the playmaking of, uh, from that one. Oh, Rise Band again, yeah. CLG gonna take that one out. Curious to see what Team Liquid have for their final ban. They have quite a few options to choose from. But uh, I like what you're saying about the Thresher. That's when you get him though, you pick the Blitzcrank and then he'll support. Ah, take him out. No, War Hooks, <laughs> Nautilus and Blitzcrank. <laughs> I don't think we'll see that one, unfortunately. It's been a while since Blitz was a kind of big yeah. <laughs> defensive support. I do expect something more complimentary to the Varus poke style rather than that. So 
Once again, uh, the Zed find himself there, targeted at who he, as Team Liquid did last time around on a blue side. Yeah, kind of interesting to see them ban it here, because like the, he could have taken it in the last game, but they're afraid of giving it to him as a counter pick. And I love this echo pick from CLG, just denying that away from Golden Glue. Yep, they learned from that game number one. Uh, and it has also been a longtime favorite champion of who he. That was, we, you know, we mentioned the double teleport play that they made against Team Liquid. Uh, that really was so surprising and got them that important win. Who he was on Echo. That was one of the champions they were doing it with. And in that case, interesting little trying to take away from each other here and trying to take away the sustain from Aphromoo. Now, does Aphromoo want to be a healing champion so badly that he plays the Sona and brings that one back out? Or is he actually going to uh, change it up here? Could still just go with, you know, uh, one of the other shielding champions, but as far as the actual sustain. Ooh. So this is my thinking. Zed's banned. Like, Echo's really solid. What do you possibly pick into him? Well, I, why I like the Echo pick so much, but all right, they're going to farm it out instead and go for Oriana. All right, so we won't see another one of the melee matchups in the mid lane, and the Golden Glue actually going to go with the Oriana that has. She's just so good all around and has performed very well for both of these you know, squads in team fights. Pretty clear here. That from me, though, maybe still sticking to his defensive support preferences. Not a healer, but there's plenty of shields, Lulu and Karma. Somewhat alike, but I like the Karma pick here from Afro. Yeah, Karma can give you that team-wide speed boost rather than um, really focusing more on single targets like Lulu and really allow them all to reposition. When you do have a mid lane Echo, uh, it is going to be one of those divers and wants to go with the Maokai. So any sort of speed that gets Echo into position where he can proc his own speed off of his passive does kind of have a multiplying effect. Certainly does, and I think Team Comp's looking about as similar as we expected them to, given that we have gone all the way to this final game here. I mean, pretty standard stuff. I think once again, we'll have to be looking at the jungle matchup. Both Rain Over and Xmithy can get early work done. And bottom lane, if they decide to go crazy and fight again, we'll have to look out. But I think mid lane's actually maybe the more volatile lane. Yeah, and one of the reasons that both of the games this series have, have been kind of that one-sided affair is that both of them uh, running these five on five, uh, squads with the tank in front, and if you get that early lead, force the team fights. Not a lot of uh, other options, though. We probably will see uh, teleport advantage for CLG as who he on the echo bring that one for the early return to lane and then cross map plays. Yep, I like it here. CLG set themselves up nicely. We'll see what happens here in our final game between these two. Don't forget, of course, you can still vote out on Twitter with the hashtags TLWIN or hashtag CLGWIN. Nice little crowd packed in here for our final game of the weekend, Kobe. Mm -mm. Still some probably going on on the other stream, but we will... Don't check yet. Be done with this one. <laughs> you can check after this game. Out of the Summoner's Rift for game three between TL and CLG. Team Liquid really looking to start salvaging some of their season and have a strong run into the back half. And CLG actually pretty firmly in the middle right now. So we're going to solidify their position of game for themselves and stay strong moving towards the end of the season. Both these teams definitely trying to make their spot in playoffs. Give it a little padding. All right, another invade this time from red side. So G push them out of the brush. Yeah, and again, we've seen our invades on this side both times, except this time CLG are going to take initiative and invade with the red side. And they have the Maokai. Let's see, has Sean leveled anything up yet? No, not quite yet. Both sides getting the deep wards mirrored. Looks like they won't be starting the saplings for Smithy to give him that little boost. Not yet at least. Might have just do the red. room for one, but yeah, Xmithy just going to position in this brush instead. Darshan, Darshan says, see ya. Again, I'm leaving. Against the Nautilus matchup, um, could be pretty difficult if you started sapling. So Darshan probably doesn't want to have to give up any pressure there. Late ward as well for CLG. Aphromoo putting that one down and just getting some vision over the blue buff. So I like a lot of the prep work here from CLG. Wanting to make sure that A, know where Rain Over is, but if he's going for any sort of invade, mm -hmm. making sure they have that there as well. Because they kind of knew what happened last time when uh, Rain Over got early control of the jungle and do not want to repeat that from game number one. Meanwhile, Rain Over did go for the Raptor start. 
for the extra little bit of experience that you get off of those. Since there are so many in the camp, and Jungle Adam gives you that bonus. Bit of help from Golden Glue, so nice stuff there. And we'll again track this bottom lane. They played awfully aggressively, particularly at level one. And ah, this is what they wanted. It's Smithy actually invading, but Team Liquid has spotted that out. Yeah, they do have a defensive ward on it. We'll see how uh, Rainover moves over. The prep ward from CLG one step ahead, as you said, we'll see the counter move from Rainover. See if they can get back here and punish him, because Smithy's on the way. They are planning out exactly where Rainover's going to go. Uh, the difference is going to be, can they actually get there to make it matter? And it looks like he might be able to finish it off. Will Smithy might be able to get to the blast. Yeah, he's time. booking it. Going, it's a race. He's going as fast as he can. He has information as well, but just goes for the Wolves instead. I guess the race, not one there. Team Liquid's bottle lane actually coming up. Matt, yep. give, him a, give him a bit of a heal, and Rainover gets the buff. So just buffs traded here, but nice jungle play early on from both teams. Saw that they had they were already behind on the race. Plus, bottom lane is pushing in for Team Liquid, so they have priority and able to get their support over there first. Good damage there from Sticks here, though. Matt gonna heal it up, but good work done as who he dives in onto Golden Glue, trying to get aggressive, but every auto attack from Ariana in the early game always feels pretty devastating. And looks like who he's out of potion charges right now, so might be looking for an early teleport back into his lane, although Golden Glue's Oof. Getting in there. Smithy and behind who he's going to keep him safe. Yeah, we do have a visit here from Smithy. It's a bit dangerous because he's kind of low at the moment and they don't know where Rainover is. It's a he's bait. Yep. It's a double bait. Rainover's here. <laughs> Good dash away from Nick Smithy, though. Yeah. I don't know if he could have walked a little closer to the brush to try and bait him in further. But regardless, nobody going down. Uh, big, big difference is that they do get to shove that wave in. And uh, Rainover got to counter juggle an extra camp as well. So he has this level difference here with Smithy. Slightly ahead in experience. The top laners are locked oh, up. Oh, he's though. in. Rainover just going to track him. And Smithy gets tagged. Oh, sorry, tags him. Yeah, the top laners are locked up uh, using their CC on each other, though. So both junglers just got to kind of walk on through. And no harm, no foul there. Smithy just has to go back to his own jungle. But because of that long route and the attempt at uh, countering Rainover there, he actually ends up a camp behind. And Rainover also able to get the Scuttle Crab on his way out here. Yeah, nice play again from Rainover. It's not as devastating as the first game, but we're going to take control early. And even though Smithy a little bit behind on camps, he's going for a gank here. Can Maokai lock up Lorlo? This is how you make it up. There's the root in. Lorlo going to get tagged by the Q. Damage is there, but he flashes out the last mech. And now Rainover going to look to turn oh. it around. Double slow from that first spike, but no follow up there. Spikes actually don't slow anymore uh, oh. from Kha'Zix until you upgrade the W and they're isolated. That's why a lot of people have been, you know, going for the early W uh, evolution. Evolution. We'll see what he does. They I learned. Exhaust down here in the bottom lane, though. Piglet getting flushed on oh. Aphromoo. Goes straight in for a bit. Stixie zoned out and low on health. Aphromoo could cost him a bit. Who he has room down as well. Stixie. Oh. Oh. Matt going to get the kill. Follow oh, this first point for Matt. He does get it. Piglet's going to fall in return. Another now Matt's going to chase down Aphromoo. Smithy, book it as fast as you can. Here's the Oriana, making sure Matt stays safe. And the bloodthirsty Nami picks up the first one. Uh, interesting little exchange. Very familiar. Uh, a lot like last game where they get ganked in. This time around, Team Liquid, they get the first blood. Matt is the one who cashed in. Hui, oh, okay. though, is very deep. Looking for the 1v2. Smithy here to turn it all around. That's a great kill for X Smithy. And now Golden Glue going to get slowed up. Hui just needs to keep out playing. Golden Glue flashes out of the way, but Hui phases us back in. Oh, no, he hit a minion. That could be disastrous, but they're going to try oh. and complete the knife. Golden Glue jukes around the queues, and he's safe. CLG <laughs> eventually even up the gold here as they stick around too long. Go for the pincer onto Matt. Meanwhile, Rainover pushed in the mid lane, so minions were lost there, and the fighting just constant here. All right, so Aphromoo flashes in for the point blank, ultimate on the uh, Q there to get the explosion. And then Stixe trying to get the deadly first to lock in the kill, self roots. And we've seen this so many times where supports are punishing the Jin players uh, with their self root on Deadly Flourish, lands the easy bubble, and they get the kill because of it. Yep, can't complete that replay. Look at that exchange was quite a bit longer. There's a couple of trades back and forth. CLG end up up ahead in kills by only one. Gold nice and even still, though, as TL did get first blood. Oh. There's wards on wards. Being set. And I'm not sure Stick says going to buy it. Just eats a Q there from Varus. 
Ashman, we're going to poke them back out. Good root, actually, for a bit of additional damage. Smithy, you look at this, though. He's circled around, and he's just waiting for them to commit to this minion wave. And now they're backing away. <laughs> Seems to know already, but Pickle's going to get tagged up. Damage starts. And now Matt actually going to try and body block, but he's going to get snared up by the Karma. Good flash to get out from under the tether, and Sticks a can't quite nail Piglet with the deadly flourish. Jungler party down bottom. Uh, Rainover is going to go to his Krugs, but it's already warded. Smithy uh, planted a ward over that side, and it has one lit up on the red button here, so they will have full vision of the next few moments from Rainover. Allowing Huhi here to go for more trades. Yep, I like that all there, but it's kind of funny as we watch these two tanks do battle fight. Dashant's committing his ultimate after Lolo used his, so Lolo really trying to push him out of lane here. Hook lands back in, Lolo might be able to get a tank v tank solo kill, but no such luck. Yeah, I mean, he gets a health advantage. So sure. That's decent. Bottom lane, though, we're still fighting. Oh, good off from Piglet, lands up sticks. Hey, here's Rainover as well, level six, jumps in onto Aphra. That looks to be a kill. Aphra trying to run away, and Piglet gets his first one. Piglet cashes in, plus they've got a lot of power here down uh, to pressure this turret. Uh, got to make the call here. Not going to have Rainover stick around, and they finally decide to back off instead. No cannon creep makes that a little tricky. Zick Smithy going to start off his blue buff. Turn that one over to Huhi. And again, all this extra bottom lane kind of makes sense. And it's funny that we said that these two teams are trying to play their own style, but have kind of played the same style all series long. Roaming mid laners, tank top laners, and all the action in the bottom lane. Well, the difference in mid laners right now is a decent amount of CS, as Golden Glue has been able to punish Huhi pretty heavily. Both of them have been roaming a lot, as you said. But uh, that is one of the big differences so far. Golden Blue still looking to push that lane in. Huhi, though, with the early revolver. Make some smart trades and try and get a lead, but Ariana so safe and stable in this mid lane. Golden Blue doesn't even need to play towards all the echo zoning. And again, can kind of abuse the range advantage. Although Huhi pushing out is going to try and get out of lane as many times as possible, and his teleport's almost back up. He wants to make a global play with that as well. Yeah, just going to have the blue buff handoff here for Golden Blue to be able to stay in the lane and continue to farm. Meanwhile, top laners' teleports will be coming off of cooldown after uh, their last usages here. So if the sparks continue to fly on the bottom side, we might see more members joining that party. And the first turret gold is primed and ready. If they win the next one down around there, it could have a large payout. Big poke on the stick, say though. It's just a serrated duck and a level four piglet queue. Added bonus of all the, uh, you know, lethality, popularity. Every time, if there's a lot of fighting here in the bottom lane, every time you die, and you can still buy something. Just <laughs> buy a long sword, buy another long sword, <laughs> grab your tier. A lot of little parts that they can stack up. Well, party continues. Both junglers are actually down towards this side. Xmithy's starting a Drake down. Reyno is looking for another lane gank. Yeah, interesting little sidetrack here from CLG. Uh, they have had vision control for quite a while in the river and they are going to take advantage of it, even though Team Liquid were moving down for another fight in bottom lane. CLG go for the objective instead and cash in on Ocean. Pays off for themselves here and pretty important in hook lethality based AD carries to have the Ocean Drake. In fact, there's another one coming up, I believe. There we go. CLG have that one. And Matt, they're going to push this wave back out as CLG did have to take the long way back around to lane. In fact, Smith is hanging out. They're hoping that Sticks say it looks like good enough bait. Yeah, a couple of deep wards there from Team Liquid and farming continues. Still very close in this game. Haven't seen anything break it wide open yet. Double teleports from CLG. Have to keep that in your mind as well. I think you've already mentioned it, but that first turret goal being up for grabs is probably what's going to start to swing it, and then we'll need some sort of exchange in action for that to happen. Probably not here in the top lane though, although Lolo is off to a small CS lead. Darshan should play catch up as the wave comes towards his turret. But maybe everyone's going to get involved. We've seen 3v3s a lot in the bottom lane in this first 11 minutes. Perhaps it's time for the top laners and the mid laners to all get in there as well. Well, let's take, uh, take stock of the summoner spells as everybody is ready with them. So the, the ganks are decently hard to pull off here when everyone still has flashes. Um, but we could see Smithy go for one of those insect plays with a Sin. And try and create something. Maokai, both top laners actually shove the wave and keep heading halfway down the river, but then get called off and go back to their relentless health battle. This kind of tells you a lot about 
I think, where the teams want to find an advantage, given that everyone's leaving to try and see if they can't make something happen. Well, also, we Ooh. are seeing a visit here to the mid lane. But if we notice the trend in Vision, it had just swept all the way down. CLG had a bunch of red wards down around Dragon and into Team Liquid side. Now Team Liquid sweeping back as they group up jungler and support to fight back with the control wards. And that's really been the battle line that's been moving. Everybody, again, just trying to get what advantage they can. Piglet doing some damage to the turret there. So maybe Team Liquid, if they can continue pushing in and playing up in this lane, can force something. In fact, Rainover is also there just to the top. Maybe looking for a dive, but it's Smithy around mid again. What hops over? Oh, good Ooh. position there from who? We're gonna almost stun up Golden Glue. They're gonna dive in for a Golden Glue. Doesn't give it up. Flashes out of the way. Super low though. Let's see what they do with this uh, control of the map right now. He's gonna have to go all the way back to base and no teleport. CLG looks like they're just gonna try and get damage onto the turret. So not not really gonna result in a big objective. Not sure they can convert for much else with the Drake already been taken by them. So. They'll do about 50% or maybe more. Don't have any more creeps coming just yet, so not going to take it down, I don't think. Good block there from Huhi on the spike, but Rainer again leaps in. Smithy makes sure to ward him off with a Q, and Huhi's going to keep pushing through as Golden Glue does return to lane. No boots could be a bit tricky, but Merlin Omicron is a nice item spike for him. Yeah, and it has started to even up the CS in that mid lane. When they have this constant pressure on Golden Glue, the lead that he had is dwindled. Here comes the second invade of the jungler support combos. We're going to miss, though, as Huhi diving back in onto Golden Glue. Good shockwave pins him back, but Aphromu is still here. Summoners. He's going to flash forward and tether him up. This DL are here to collapse. Huhi is going to look to go down, and Matt's able to take out another kill. Yes, he is. Matt gets the double kill. Team Liquid are able to get another one here as the teleport from Lorlo immediately goes off, but Darshan on Maokai. We'll have to see what happened at the beginning of the skirmish because it looks like he wasn't ready or they made the call that they didn't need him. Yeah, they very clearly did. Blue buff still on the way as well, although Rainover not feeling too confident with the rest of CLG collapsing. Gonna turn still it away. He doesn't have a smite though. And now Aphromu's gonna tether him up. Oh. He's not gonna land. The buff is low, but there's Darshan diving in. Ulti out is gonna get the kill as there's Lolo tagged up by the slow curtain call. Last bullet misses. But Huhi back in the mix again. Eats an instant Aquabism, but forces Lolo to flash. All right, back to 4 4 here as uh, Rainover goes down trying to get the blue buff. And he did eventually get the last hit on it, but doesn't get to wear it anymore. Darshan now, the proud owner of the champion's belt. <laughs> and the blue buff, which is nice. Xmithy is in a pocket of fog of war. Matt, he wants the big off play. Doesn't have ultimate, though. Actually, just barely. Gets a summoner heal out, though, just because of the scare. And CLG, again, looking to press forward. Red buff is up. They could try and contest this. Uh, turret should go down, and that will be the first one we've been talking up. There's no trial. Lola is down here. Ooh. Gonna zone them out of the way. Huhi and Xmithy will leave. Darshan walking back to top lane and we'll reset things again as both teams have been playing it nice and close with the early skirmish trades. Yeah, Team Liquid moving their defense quick and CLG want to go grab top minion wave. So, again, the action dissipates. And understandably, this uh, third game has played out very differently to the first two. No early leads here. Back and forth trading as the team is just trying to make sure no one gets too far ahead. All right, here's the... The start of it. Darshan was recalling, and they thought CLG made the call right here. Probably it was, hey, we got that kill pretty clean. And then by the time Lorlo shows up, they're like, oh, goodness, uh, you're probably dead anyway. So that's why they didn't want to use the summoner spell. But Team Liquid were able to use that to turn around until they invade on Baron and gets turned around again. Oh, Smithy also around the side of this tower. It could be a tower dive here for these two. Might be dangerous because uh, Rainover is waiting around behind the wolf camp. Golden Glue, good instincts actually going to check that brush before going to the blue buff. But Xmithy going to go for a blast cone used. Xmithy still chasing through, but Rainover's now there. Shockwave gets him against the wall, but he safeguards out. There's the wave going to find who he goes for a bit of a surf and assault continues on this turret. All right, meanwhile, tanks up on the top side. Lorlo has no teammates. They just got pushed out of his own jungle. The kick back. Aphromu trying to tether him up as well. Oh, he dredge lands up to the wall. But it's going to keep chasing him. Ward goes down, but the team oh. is there to protect him. For how long? Slow from Afro Q. Good bubble there onto X Mithy, but Lorlo is going to go down to Huhi. Rainover gets the trade kill out onto the Lee Sin. 
But now they're gonna keep chasing Stixay with a bullet. Tags Matt by Golden Glue. Gonna try and cancel it. <laughs> He's just still shooting at Stixay. Snipes Matt. Now gonna have to flash away from Golden Blue is laying into him with auto attack start. Sean goes bound to pick up his Roman up to the top lane also. And now Golden Blue gonna get snared up and killed by Huhi. What a mess. It's three for two on the back end. Mess indeed as Stixay fires off all his sh shots and oh they got the smite. Ray never says no, who he says see you later. I'm out with the chrono break. Alright, well, after all of that, you know. Blue Quadrant skirmish that we just had. Gold goes back to pretty much even. And all the minions are right in the middle too, so no big swing from that uh, kind of chaotic little fight that started with four people trying to take down Lorlo. First turret still up for grabs as well, so 300 gold in the game so far. We're approaching 18 minutes pretty quickly here. This is pretty fitting with how yeah. one-sided game number one was and how one side of the other way, game number two is. Game number three, decisive series, coming down to this one. Turret's about to go down. Big Lurk gonna get kicked back in. I remember he's looking to take it out. There's Stixay with a kill. That's a second kill on the Nami of Stixay. Just deletes Team Liquid's bottom lane. Woo, they're able to use it as bait, kind of. The turret's still barely standing. CLG press forward. They're going for it, Dashan TP's in. Lolo tag next Smithy. No, Ultimate gonna try and slow him down. Root in from Stix, they tether in from Afromu. And now Huhi gonna look to dive it down as well. Lolo running back towards his tower, but he's got no safety. Stix, they oh. picked up a delayed triple kill. They're able to use that juicy first turret gold as a little bit of bait and push it back the other way. This is the first of the really big swings in this game because Drake could follow right after this and add some more regeneration to CLG's side. Finally, a real gold lead for one team. CLG up 2,500. Gonna nab Ocean number two for themselves also. Or are they? Team Liquid are looking to collapse. Golden Blue wants that for a move, but who he wants him instead? Blaskoon's gonna get him out. Matt's gonna tank up the shots and Ocean Drake will go over. Darshan gonna get waved. Nope, not quite. Avoids it. Water ineffective against grass. <laughs> Sean makes his way back to home territory. And CLG, see what they can actually do. Because the bottom turret, I still expect it to go down to Team Liquid. It's very close. Let's take another look here, though. Because, man, Smithy makes the call any second later here. Uh, and Team Liquid would have more members arriving. But he gets right in on the piglet, kicks him under the turret, and they get the kill just in time. Then, Channel the counter teleport here, and they are, since they have Jin for the long range snares, they would have chased down for another one. And they just keep going. Guhi also on the roam again. Golden Blue very far behind on this play. That's easy cleanup for CLG. They get the extra turret gold. They win the team fight. Get the Drake, but TL, as expected, do clean up mm -hmm. that bottom out of turret in the replay. So CLG still up 2,000 gold isn't bad. It's a lead, but it's not a huge lead. Yeah, still definitely relies on the execution in these team fights. Huhi, Smithy, and Darshan looking to dive and try to find Piglet. And I think now the game's broken open a little more. Good tag on Piglet. Them, though. Ten of Corruption, Rain never leaps in after the flash. Golden Blue gonna seal it up. Chocolate doesn't land on others, but he's already got the kill. Darshan taking up on the front end. Smithy kicks three into each other. Matt goes through his team, and now Darshan chasing through Hui. Still going down to Stix. They snipes on for the unstoppable Piglet. Trying to get a bit of extra work done here, but Rain never getting chased down. Hui just relentless in his chase on Team Liquid members, and Smithy might try and grab another flank. Max recalls out the same, oh. but Darshan dives in. Flutes with the triple knockup. It's an absolute mess in the mix of it, but Lolo goes down. Oh. Six oh. dominating, and there's the snipe. Tui on a killing free. Takes one down. Piglet down as well. Almost an ace for CLG. Oh, Golden Glue uses his shockwave on the one pick that they got. Ends up killing Aphromoo before it even has to hit, and that is a huge team fight spell down. CLG and Smithy specifically with a very big game saving kick there, or team fight saving at least, kick there for CLG to turn the team fight around and then a very critical chase down. It's a lonely Nami, the defense, the defense on the Baron play. CLG all safely in the pit, who is going to zone out anyone that tries to come in and maybe even take the turret down. He's got Baron, he might as well slap it. There's the phase dive. Matt going to try and deter him, but. He's just going to hang out. There's a second tower for CLG, who all of a sudden out to a 5,000 gold lead. Yeah, a lot of leverage now for CLG with back-to-back -back victories. But look at this. They they go all in. Vayner flashes in on him, and then 
The Shockwave there being down allows CLG to make this call. They fully engage this 4v5. Good split kick there, knocks up a bunch. Styx is able to chase off, and they just split them, divide and conquer here. Then basically, the chase is kept up with the confidence that they still have Jin Ultimate in about three seconds coming up. As soon as it comes off cooldown, Styx A opens up. All the CLG members evacuate. <laughs> Uhuhi ultimates back. Uh, Smithy's out there with the safeguard, and Darshan flashes. So all the frontline engage for the snare and then are able to disengage right after and allow the uh, cover fire to come through. That was slim margins, but very big winnings for CLG off of that team fight. And just looking so confident. The blue buff does go over to Golden Glue, the intended recipient, so that's good news for Team Liquid, but it is little victories right now. Darshan and his Baron up minions are actually going to kill Lolo if he stays around for too long. Although Piglet's here, Darshan looking for the 1v2 now. He'll live for a while, he pops the ultimate. Lolo actually still taking fire now, he's detended on the Piglet. And I don't think Tail really like this situation. There's oh, Jin God. Ultimate, this is a bit unfair, there's a kill for Darshan. After the snipe from Jin. CLG not going to get the turret, but it's continuing to do damage. Three turrets to one already. Gold lead massive from the Baron that they picked up. And now Stixay is going to take over duty of this push, and CLG are pushing it. Dashan instantly TPs back down to the lane. They want to break this game completely open. Four turrets fall. CLG are cashing in big off of this one, and who he's going to make his possible escape here. One we get to the blast time. Who are we going to get the first stun there? Blast cone's there. Shockwave oh, the back wave. in his knife, but there's a chrono break. Damage in. Face time's over. Oh my god, he doesn't save himself. Shut down <laughs> for Golden Glue. Uh, the auto's in the air already and finds him, but still Jerry in the base. Yeah, Lola going to get snared up as well. The inhibitor also exposed. Piglet is going to join the fight, but Darshan real tanky. Sticks, they got exhausted. Saving that last shot for a carry. Raynova going to try and poke them down as Piglet fires piercing arrows into the back line. Aphromu evacuates Teleported the spot, the though. river. They want to keep up this chase and cut them off. Nautilus coming down the river now. He's trying to turbo it up. He's a little lumbering, but he's going to try and make it ASAP. TL, they're going to turn it back around, but CLG starting the fight again. Matt's here, but Sticks A goes godlike, taking out the Kha'Zix. Now Darshan moving forward as he's going to get healed. He just cannot be killed. Golden Glue goes down to Darshan, and now the chase is on. They're going to try and lock up Piglet, who flashes out to safety. Root not quite there, but Darshan wants to chase him. Good bubble from Matt. He's going to save him down, but it cost him his own life from McSmithy. Better core coordination from CLG on that call. They make the call to turn as soon as Rainover jumps in, and Rainover's a little bit early before Lorlo is able to get there. This, he gets blown up before it even starts, and CLG still have the Baron buff to push with. Yep. Inhibitor down. There's the retake on the inhib. CLG to maximum damage with this Baron buff. Infernal Drake up in 10 seconds, just as the Baron's about to dip away. And they're almost 10,000 gold ahead. In fact, who he may make it so if he takes this turret down. Talked about the scrappy match victories that CLG have been getting. A lot of 2-1s now. And it looks headed that way as they really gain a strong foothold in this decisive game number three. Look at the wards they've left behind. They've absolutely demolished the entire bottom side of the map. And as you said, very easy Infernal Drake to continue that snowball. Six are going to help Big Smith. The else is taking a little too long. But Drake goes down, CLG collect their third overall of the game, and we'll watch this mess again. Lolo, I like the attempt from Team Liquid. He's almost there, though. So you wait a few more seconds as rain over to, before you jump in like that. Because that made CLG very decisive call. You see they all instantly turned on rain over. He's dead, and then Lolo arrives at the fight, but you know, the Squishies are already getting chased down, and nothing he could do. So a little bit early on the call there, but CLG good reaction to turn around and immediately focus fire the squishy assassin. And all of a sudden, CLG are just disgustingly far ahead. Who's going to get this blue buff? They've got three items on all their carries, pretty much. In fact, three items plus on Sticks A. Wave, they're going to find Afro Shockwave back in for the pick. Trying to corruption lands. It's going to sit in the Makai ultimate and be A-OK. -okay. Oh, -ho -ho. that last is not even enough, although Sticks A does burn the heal for it. Yeah, pretty close there on Afro Moo. But the double ocean Drake kick into gear. And uh, things feeling pretty good as who he's split pushing the inhibitor, shoving bottom wave. Super Minion's going to tie up Lolo for a little while. Yeah, takes on Alice a long time to try and kill double Super Minion waves. And in that time, CLG are just trying to pressure down the bottom side. Going to do this academic. CLG have looked very clean in all of these engages, despite how close the first 18, 20 minutes was.
Hui is actually pressuring the Nexus turrets while CLG taking this top side as well. Slowly but surely. Walking it in. Again, can join the team with the teleport if he needs to, but it's not too far from them, given that they're shoving into the base of Team Liquid. Farron also up in a minute 20. Team Liquid, the problems just haven't stopped for them, honestly, in the last five to 10 minutes. And CLG know that they can be patient here. Anyone out of position to get a very simple pick, given that how strong Stixa is. Yeah, the, the backline dive is actually very reliable for CLG. Uh, as long as who he does not get knocked up right as he's low health and can still get off his ultimate, they feel pretty confident about pushing this one in. Darshan doesn't care about tanking. Yeah, he's going to go for it. Who are we going to try and zone them out with the parallel convergence? Damage starting onto the turret now. It's Mithy safeguarding onto the Echo. Golden Glue does Oh, there's Blit! Stixay actually going to take damage from right over. He's going to try and make the big play. Good flash out, though, and Stixay gets himself out. Here comes the ultimate coat and Cortex. Golden Glue, Matt going to take the second, but Hui straight into the mix. He gets Chain of Corruption, but Sun uses out the Shockwave, takes out Rain over in the back end, and now surges forward to take down Piglet. Darshan gets the next deal, and Golden Glue bleeding as Darshan and Xmith are going to chase him down towards his fountain. Matt trying to save him with a double wall, but can't get it done. Now Lolo looking to get tagged up next. Nordless not quite getting his feet caught in the deadly flourish, but kick back from Xmith. Should seal it. Lolo flushes out the safety bit. CLG and is tearing the back. Face to pieces now. Yep, Nexus turret number two won't last too long here. Lorlo's trying to save it though. He's gonna do what he can, but the turrets are gonna fall down. Hui diving in onto Matt as he takes that kill down. Lolo just gonna get kite around. He's gonna try and save his Nexus, but CLG turned back towards it. Lolo forced out of his own bed, and CLG take it over Team Liquid. Racking up another win here for Counter Logic Gaming. Game number three really turning it on after those two team fights on the bottom side. I mean, we always joke about it, right? But CLG always look best together. They played so cohesively in that game. I mean, that one big team fight that snowballed into the Baron, but you said it. That was a game that was very difficult to win. The margin for error, very thin. But they managed to do it, make it look pretty easy for them. And this continuing trend of CLG looking better and better as the week goes on, figuring themselves out, figuring the metagame out, and just getting some of their groove back on full display there, I think, in game number three. Yeah, and banning out Rain over, targeting him with the Graze Band again. Once they got that one down, a lot more successful. Team Liquid did have a very good showing in that opener, though, when he did get the grace for rain over and they got the early invade some things to look to for them but we're gonna have to recover after this because we are approaching the second half of the season here and i think for rain over in that last game his kazakh actually looked quite good i mean it's it was good but it wasn't dominating like the Graves was and it can be tricky to do that Kha'Zix has been changed and nerfed a little bit on this patch he still looked like his old self but again Liquid need to win together and despite how close they made the first few minutes of the game they just couldn't find team fights there and CLG kind of ran them over in the back end of that game I think that last fight really encapsulates what you're talking about with winning together where teleport coming down with the tank but he's not quite there yet a couple seconds too early means that the more decisive team gets to turn around immediately uh, and get the inhibitor out of it. And that really was why the, the game pace was so quick. This was only a 28 and a half minute game, uh, much, much, much quicker than uh, we're coming to expect so far this yeah. split. And credit to Xmithy as well. I think a lot of criticism has been leveled at him this season because it just hasn't seemed like his old stuff. Series looked quite good here against Rainover. Definitely. I mean, he smite steal in, in uh, game number one. Then he had the dragon one as well. A lot of plays here on Lee Sin as well to get the team going. And uh, definitely looking up. Yeah, I think in, I mean, who he does feel in his element. Also, Echo is the champion that you said last year he looked incredibly good. It's one of the first champions I saw him play, and I was like, okay, I get why who he's good now. He's really good on these zoning team fighting champions. He has really good in-game awareness, and his Echo looks super solid. And if that's a champion that's making his way back into the meta, who might find it on the ban list pretty soon? Yeah, I mean, it was nice to see the adaptations as well uh, between these two teams, figuring out the values that each other do place in the champion picks and bans. Uh, but for more on that inside uh, series, we're going to send over.